Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be a tag. This is the off the top of your head tag and this was originally done by the library mouse Gina. I will have added her down below um, to give you a link to her channel. I actually saw MJ over at Reading This Life do it and that's where I got it from. So let's get to the questions. These should be off the top of my head. Now, because I've had to write them down, I have had a little think, um, but um, pretty much uh, most of this was off the top of my head and my answers are going to be the first thing I thought of when I saw, saw the questions. So question one, is your favorite picture book that you read as a child? And my honest answer to this is I don't remember reading picture books as a child. I remember reading chapter books. I know there were picture books in the house because they were there for my sister and for my brother who are both younger than me, but I don't remember what they were. Um, so I can't really answer that one. Um, you know, in the UK, we had the Ladybird library of books, um, which had the little red hen and things like that in it. Now I know I probably read those, but I read them with my mum and by the time I remember reading, I had moved on to chapter books. I was quite an advanced reader at quite a young age. Question number two is a series you loved as a child. I'm going to go and get the book. Now, because I'm a child of the 80s, I don't really remember there being the plethora of books that there are these days for nine to 12 year olds. Um, there wasn't a lot of choice. One series that I actually still have on my shelves, unfortunately, I don't own the entire series and I probably did read the first book at some point, but I don't own it. So this is book two, but that is The Black Stallion Returns. This is the Black Stallion series by Walter Farley. And I remember really enjoying these. And as a teen, early teen, I went and found other copies of this book, uh, of these books of the series and purchased them. Um, I don't have the full series. Um, I do have two or three that are actually missing. But this was about a black stallion who is found by a boy on an island and they ship him back to America. Um, and he is a great racer. And the rest of the series, I think, follows his legacy as well um, with children of the black stallion. But this was a good, fun, kind of not adventure series, but um, adventurous in a way, uh, because it is about a boy and his horse. Um, and yeah, I just really remember enjoying these when I was a kid. Question number three is the worst book you have read or tried to read? Um, there's a few and I tend to blank them out. The only one I can think of off the top of my head and that is because it is recent read and that is Black Horse by A.C. Williams. I didn't enjoy this at all. There have been others over the years, mostly romance because if you write romance badly it's pretty noticeable. Um, but other than that I tend to block them out. I don't think about them so much. Um, when and if they are that bad, I will probably stop reading them in the first couple of chapters and just never go back to them. And they're done. They're gone. They're out of the way. So that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Question number four is your favourite reading or book memory? Um, my favourite reading memory um, includes the rest of my family. Um, we're going back a little under 20 years. And I think at the time I was reading, um, now it's either one of the Farseer trilogy books or it's one of the Live Ship Traders books by Robin Hobb. I can't remember where I was at the time, but I know I was reading one of those books. And I was at my mum's. I wasn't living at home. My brother and sister were still living at home. Um, but I used to go to my mum's every Friday evening for my evening meal. Um, I, when I first moved out, it was a deal that I did with her because I have issues with food. And it was so that she could make sure that I ate a good meal every week. Not that it ever worked out that way. Hey, mum. Um, but yes, I had taken the book with me. We'd had our evening meal. My brother and sister were going out for the evening. 
um, and because I didn't live at home I wasn't going out with them I had my book with me I was curled up in the armchair in the window um, and I was reading and after a couple of hours I looked up at my mum and I said where are Louise and Darren going out and uh, my mum said they went about an hour ago you spoke to them you said goodbye you wished them a good evening and I have no recollection. In that moment, I had no recollection of speaking to them at all. I was so absorbed by the book that I had no memory of having entire conversations with my family. And that is why the, these books are some of my favourite of all time. Because, and, and why these are such a hard thing to live up to. I know there are people out there who question um, that I don't give many five stars and it's because that is what you have to live up to. I have to be so absorbed into a book that I do not remember talking to you. And that's one of my favourite memories because it, it just, it made us all laugh. Um, it, it made my brother and sister in laugh when they were told about it afterwards. It made myself and my mum laugh about it in the moment. But it's just, it, it's just one of my favourite memories because it goes back to some of my favourite books and it is just proof positive of why these books are some of my favourite of all time. Question number five, a book you loved as a movie. Again, I'm going to go and get the book from my shelf. This is only the first book in a series. It was an entire series that was made into a movie and that is the Lord of the Rings series by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is my beautiful cloth bound um, hardback edition of Fellowship of the Ring. Now, side note, I didn't like Fellowship of the Ring when I first watched it, um, but I decided to put my memories of reading the book aside and go back and re-watch the film from a filmgoer's perspective with no knowledge of the story whatsoever. And from then on, I have been in love with the films. Now, I think these films are more than 20 years old. Um, the, the first film came out um, more than 25 years ago, I think, at this point. I can't quite remember how long. Um, but I know I know the job that I was in when I went to watch it. So it's got to be about... Um, it's got to be about 24, 25 years. And, yeah, I just fell in love with the films. And I think Peter Jackson at that time did what he could with the functionality, with cinematic ability that he had available to him at the time. Some of the things that he's cut from the books, I kind of agree with now that looking at the at films and having reread the book, I don't know that they would have added that much more. I know that in terms of some of the story, when you deep dive into it, it really does make sense why that information is in there. Uh, but again, these are films I can watch over and over and over again and absolutely adore them. Um, this is a book that I haven't read that many times. I've only read it like a handful of times. But it's, again, one of my all-time favourite series um, and is long overdue a reread at this point. But it's definitely one that I am so glad that it made it onto the big screen. Question number six is a book that you wish could be turned into a movie. Um, now, I've had some of my wishes come true in recent years because of um, a, a filmmaking company, um, a romance reader who has the capacity for filmmaking, who is a filmmaker, started up a channel called Passion Flicks. And they have been taking well-loved romance novels and turning them into movies so some of my favorites so the driven series why are they the wrong way around um the driven series on my shelves uh they have been turned into movies now i haven't watched all three i've only watched the first one at some point i need to get around to watching the rest um yeah i don't really know that there are many other books on my shelves that i would like to see um yes I can't get it out. It's in too tight. Rose Matter by Stephen King. This is um, one of my all-time most read books. One of my all-time favourite books. Um, and I think that it could definitely be done justice. It would be quite a dark watch. It would be quite a difficult watch because it deals with domestic violence. 
Um, but yeah, I think it could be if the right filmmaker got their hands on it, they could do it some serious justice. And yeah, definitely Rose Matter. I mean, obviously, you know, the Malice series by John Gwynn. I mean, if someone decided to take on the realm of elderlings by Robin Hobb, I don't know that they'd necessarily translate to movies that well. Maybe, maybe good cinematic TV series. Um, then yes, I think maybe those could be done. I mean, I'm enjoying the. I think a lot of it is fantasy based. I think I will always enjoy watching fantasy films get made into films. Um, but yeah, I think probably off the top of my head, Rose Matter is probably the one that I would wish to have it given the justice it deserves. Question number seven is a character that you would like to be friends with in real life. Hadi. Hadi is the best friend in this series. She is just such a great friend. She tells it how it is. She um, doesn't let uh, doesn't let her off the hook. Um, Riley just she she just keeps her on the straight and narrow and tells her the real truth and whether Riley needs to hear it or not. Um, and I just love her. It's so much fun. Their girls' nights, her defence of Riley. Um, it just, yeah, she she's the friend you need and want in your life. So definitely, if I could meet Hattie in real life, I'd do it. Question number eight is a place you'd like to visit because of a book. Um, there aren't really. I mean, Middle Earth. I'd love to see the Shire. Um, I'd love to go to New Zealand um, because I'd love to go and see Hobbiton. Um, I got my wish last year. I've always wanted to go to Hay on Wye and go to Hay Castle. Um, Lady of Hay by Barbara Erskine is a book that inspired that. Um, I'd like to go and visit Corfe Castle because of that. So that's still on my wish list. Um, and yeah, other than that, I mean, there's lots of fictional places. I'd love to go to the Realm of the Elderlings. Um, there are some beautiful settings in that. Um, there aren't many real life places that I think I would like to visit because of books at this point. I mean, Barbara Erskine, all the books I read by Barbara Erskine are set in Scotland and Wales and in picturesque parts. So definitely Scotland is on the list. More parts of Wales is on the list. But other than that, no, not really many places have I been inspired to visit because of books. Question number nine is a non-fiction you recommend. I don't read non-fiction that often. Um, I read biographies when I do read them. Um, but one that I have read recently um, that really... Yeah, um, that was the opposite of Butterfly Hunting by Ivana Lynch. This um, is Ivana Lynch talking about her battles with an eating disorder, um, how she fell into the eating disorder, how it progressed and became a thing, um, and how then she battled it and moved on and how she's doing now or at the point that she wrote this book and because I have my own issues with food not as severe as Ivana Lynch I have my own issues with food this book really resonated with me and I think if you want to read a little bit about one person's perspective of eating disorders this is a book to read because she's not apologetic in the way she tells it she has done her best to write this as a book that doesn't tell you how to be anorexic or bulimic. She really has made an effort to tell about the struggle with it rather than rather than mechanics of it. She she avoided a lot of that, which again I appreciated greatly. Um and this book, yeah, I just it 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 was I mean, I don't know how to rate non-fiction sometimes, but 
this book is a five star for me um, and is definitely one of my favourites of all time and is one that occasionally I look at on my shelf and think I need to read it again. I just need to read it again. Um, so yeah, so that's my only non-fiction that I would recommend because other than that, they've all been... Um, not they've all been autobiographies of comedians and uh i do recommend listening to non-fiction of com autobiographies of comedians especially if they narrate it if there's an audiobook and they narrate it because then it's told with their hilarious style and they're always a good listen so if you want something fun listen to an autobiography by a comedian um and if you need something serious opposite of butterfly hunting by ivana lynch Question 10, is an author you would hang out with for the day? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Robin Hobb? Definitely. Stephen King? Yeah, I'd like to know the inner workings of that mind. Um, I mean, just, I would just love to meet any of my favourite authors, to be honest. Um, and just spend some time with them doing the things that they enjoy even just keeping them company while they're writing um, I'll quite happily sit in a corner and read their latest release before it goes to print because um, I am that person uh, and yeah so yeah any of my favourite authors I'd love to just know how they tick um, for themselves so that's that's the uh, off the top of my head tag. Now, a couple of those books, you know, I had thought about the answer before I answered it. So they weren't quite off the top of my head, but um, they were the first things I thought of when I saw the questions. Um, so I have tried to stay true to that. Uh, have a go at this tag yourself. I tag you all. If uh, you've enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel to see more of me in your feed. I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.